Hello, my name is uh, Dr. Yurif Haiken, and I'm a cardiac electrophysiologist at South Lake Regional Health Center and Pace Cardiology. I wanted to talk to you about um, supraventricular tachycardia and uh, what we can offer patients who suffer from this condition. As you know, in your heart there are four chambers, two on top and two on the bottom. Heartbeat starts in the right upper chamber in an area called the sinus node. It's your own pacemaker you're born with. It generates impulses uh, which activate the upper chambers of your heart to pump blood into the bottom chambers. Through the specialized uh, conduction system called the AV node, the bottom chambers get activated to pump blood into the lungs and uh, throughout the body. Now, most patients are born with just a single connection between upper and lower chambers in the AV node. Some patients have a second connection, uh, either called a slow pathway or an accessory pathway. Slow pathway uh, typically means doubling of the AV node, where instead of having one normal wire conducting electricity from upper to lower chambers, the patient has two. An accessory pathway, on the other hand, is a muscle fiber that conducts electricity from top chambers to the bottom chambers, somewhere in the break in the insulation around either the mitral or the tricuspid valve. These are the valves between the upper and lower chambers of the heart. In either case, the patient may develop abnormal short circuit where electricity flows down from the upper chambers to the bottom chambers, typically through the AV node, and then goes back up to the upper chambers, either using the slow pathway or the accessory pathway. Patients with these conditions typically present with palpitations, rapid, regular beating of the heart, which starts ra suddenly, stops suddenly, may stop when the patient bears down, holds their breath, applies pressure to um, you know, their eyes, which is certainly not something we would recommend you doing, or to their neck. We have a number of medications which may help by slowing conduction through the AV node. Uh, these are beta blockers or calcium channel blockers, However, they're not foolproof, and while the patient typically has arrhythmia only some of the time, these medications can make you feel tired and slow down your heartbeat all of the time. Antiarrhythmic medications like flecainide and propafenone are sometimes indicated for patients with an accessory pathway or the WPW, Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome. But again, these medications have a number of potential side effects. As an alternative, we can ablate the abnormal pathway or cauterize it. Patients with this condition present to the electrophysiology laboratory, which we have at South Lake Regional Health Center. Under sedation, sometimes anesthesia, we place local anesthetic around the veins and arteries in the groin and put catheters using intravenous approach without any cutting or stitching. The catheters are placed in the heart. These are thin wires with electrodes at the tip. We use the catheters to both map the electrical activation of the heart, find the short circuit, and then get rid of it. Some of these patients require rapid pacing of the heart to find the short circuit. Some may require administration of very potent medications like adrenaline, which make you feel like you had a strong Starbucks coffee uh, to cause or potentiate causing the arrhythmia on the table. We do need to be able to find the short circuit in order to get rid of it. Once we find the short circuit, electrical energy is applied to the short circuit with 98% success in getting rid of it and getting rid of the arrhythmia. The procedure does have a few small potential side effects. Obviously, there is a small risk of bleeding at the groin. As we're manipulating catheters in the heart, there is an extremely small risk of bleeding around the heart, risk of a heart attack, stroke, risk to life, and a very small risk of needing a pacemaker if inadvertently the AV node is destroyed. These risks are extremely small. We perform hundreds of these procedures, and unlike most things in medicine, these procedures are effectively curative with an extremely small risk of arrhythmia recurrence in patients who suffer from these conditions. The procedures take about an hour and patients typically leave within four hours.